Good day, Stardust. My name is Stephanie and I have a passion for tarot cards. In today's video, we will be discussing the history of tarot. But before we jump into this video, please consider hitting the subscribe button as I'm kickstarting this new YouTube channel. Please help me reach 1000 subscribers so I can be part of the YouTube partnership program. If you do this, it will be good karma and I will return in kind by creating interesting metaphysical videos. So any help you can provide me would be greatly appreciated. Tarot cards carry a mystery about them and their origins are even more mysterious. Many scholars have debated the tarot lore. The when, where, and who first developed the tarot card is interpreted differently depending on the archaeology, anthropology, and cultural backgrounds of different types of researchers and historians throughout history. So, in this video, I'm going to do my very best to give you an outline of the history of tarot based on the research that I did. It is a limited research, it's not the full complete one, and there are many different types of perspectives and um, vantage points that you can take when looking at the actual origins of the tarot. But for the sake of this video, I think you will be um, pleasantly surprised and content with uh, my little uh, history of the tarot to give you a really good um, foundation of understanding uh, this magical and wonderful tarot deck that has inspired psychics and mediums throughout the world. Are you ready to go back in time with me? Let's go back in time. 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 One theory on the origins of the tarot is that prehistoric man used a system like the tarot as a calendar noting nature cycles. Others claim that the tarot has its origins in the legends of Atlantis. However, it's more likely that the first systems of the tarot were created or inspired by ancient Egyptians. Some researchers have stated that on the altar of the Temple of Ptah in Memphis images were found engraved on plates of gold, which resembled the images and significance of the major arcana of the tarot. Another historical perspective is seen with the, the French scholar, Porte de Gebelin, writing in his noted work, Le Monde Primitif, in 1781, asserted that the tarot is in fact the one book of the ancient Egyptians which escaped the burning of the Alexandrian library and that moreover, it contains the purest knowledge of profound matters possessed by the wise men of Egypt. Thoth was one of the most popular and influential deities in the Egyptian pantheon. He is the Egyptian god of wisdom, occult knowledge, and the arts and sciences. Thoth seems to have begun as a god of the moon, whose cycle charts the month. Thoth's name was given to the first month of the ancient Egyptian calendar. The invention of numbers and sacred writings were both attributed to Thoth. It is important to note that the tarot that we know of today, is said to be based on, the Book of Thoth, Lord of Magic, known in ancient times only by initiates. The Greeks gave Thoth the name Hermes Trismegistus and referred to his sacred works as Hermetic. Some scholars state that the 22 pictures of the major arcana were painted on the walls of an Egyptian initiation chamber located in the lower chambers of the Sphinx. To be initiated into the order of Hermes Thoth, the neophyte was taken through the gallery by a member of the order who would explain the symbolic meaning of Ten Origin or the Tarot the 22 pictures. The aspirant had to realize and understand the meaning of the pictures in order to gain enough courage, strength, and knowledge to complete the initiation. If the neophyte failed any of the initiation tests, he would be put to death. These secret initiations may be linked to the Emerald Tablet and the teachings of Hermes Trismegistus also known interchangeably as Thoth. When researching the history of tarot, we have to consider the history of divination. Divination can be defined as discerning through a symbolic form of communication. We must speculate 
if various divination tools from around the world could have influenced the system of tarot. Here are some past landmarks to ponder. The tarot shares various analogies with I Ching, the book containing ancient Chinese wisdom that can be traced back to more than 3,000 years ago. The random drawing of 64 hexagrams of I Ching is used as a traditional tool of divination. The fact that playing cards as well as paper and printing are Chinese inventions lends credibility to the theory that the most distant origins of the tarot could be sought in China. Also, the practice of Kao Chim, Chinese fortune sticks, interpreting dates back to the Jin dynasty, according to the Jade Box Records, an ancient Chinese book on date selection, written by the famous Taoist monk Xu Xuan in the 3rd century AD. As well, Asian culture, in the medieval periods, developed card decks having four suits. Some writers speculated that the cards come from India, and that the minor arcana refer to the four castes of Hinduism. The Knights Templar were a religious military order formed at the end of the First Crusade. The tarot is said to be attributed to the Order of the Knights Templar, an ascetic military order founded in 1188 to protect pilgrims and guard the routes to the Holy Land. Some have cross-referenced a link between the chalice, holy grail, and the lexicon of the tarot. A monk named Brother Johannes of Bredfeld in Switzerland, wrote an essay in 1377 describing a game of cards that outlined society's structure. Antoine Court de Gebelin, wrote in 1392 that the tarot was a book saved from one of the temples of Egypt, when all other writings were destroyed by fire. Others speculate that the tarot came from the Great Library of Alexandria. As well, in 1392, Charles VI of France bought three sets of the major arcana from a man named Grigonor. One variation of this deck is the Visconti Pack, and the other is the Marseille Tarot. Italians invent the tarot, adding trumps to the old suits. Researchers have stated that the very first official tarot deck was created in Milan, Italy, between 1428 and 1447. It's likely that the word tarot derives from tarocchi, an Italian card game that preceded tarot. These cards, known as the Visconti Sforza Tarots, were commissioned by the Duke of Milan, Francesco Visconti, as early as 1415. The Corpus Hermeticum was brought from Macedonia to Italy in the 1460s. The Corpus Hermeticum is a collection of more than a dozen treatises. They purport to have been translated from Egyptian but in fact originated in Greek. Some say that the Gypsies are the ones that brought over to Europe the Corpus Hermeticum and they interpreted this text into their divination cards, and that is why some people believe the tarot originate from the Gypsies, as they are said to be the first ones to use them for divination, fortune-telling. The Visconti Sforza tarot is used collectively to refer to incomplete sets of approximately 15 decks from the middle of the 15th century, now located in various museums, libraries, and private collections around the world. No complete deck has survived, rather, some collections boast a few face cards, while some consist of a single card. They are the oldest surviving tarot cards and date back to a period when tarot was still called triumphi, triumphs, i.e. trump, cards, and used for everyday playing. They were commissioned by Filippo Maria Visconti, Duke of Milan, and by his successor and son-in-law Francesco Sforza. They had a significant impact on the visual composition, card numbering and interpretation of modern decks. The game of tarot, non-esoteric, pervades Western Europe. French esoterists view the tarot as both hermetic and cabalistic. One of the oldest complete sets of tarot cards was published by B.P. Grimaud in 1769. Known as the Ancient Tarot de Marseille, it depicts costumes and decorations that can be dated back to at least the early 14th century. As, well, as in 1781, the publication of Du Jeu des Tarots, Volume 8 of Monde Primitif, by Court de Gebelin, was a revelation tarot deck.
Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, a British occult society founded in 1888 by Freemasons William Wynne Westcott, William Robert Woodman, and Samuel Liddell Mathers. The order brought together Kabbalistic, astrological, and Egyptian wisdom, creating a theory of tarot associations that have become generally accepted today. Notorious tarot decks were, the Thoth deck, by Alistair Crowley and artist Frida Harris, the Golden Dawn deck, by Israel Rigardi and illustrated by Robert Wong, and the Rider Waite deck, by Arthur Edward Waite and illustrated by Pamela Coleman-Smith, are the pillars of modern-day tarot cards. The French 19th-century magician and occultist Eliphas Levi incorporated tarot cards into his magical system, which cemented the connection between the tarot and magic. Joseph Paul Oswald Wirth a Swiss occultist, artist, and author, who studied esotericism and was said to be a Freemason, as he did write three volumes explaining Freemasonry. In 1889 he created under the guidance of Stanislas de Guida, a cartomantic tarot consisting only of the 22 major arcana. Known as Les 22 Arcanes du Tarot Kabbalistique, it followed the designs of the Tarot de Marseille closely but introduced several alterations. The Oswald Wirth Tarot deck features vibrant major arcana cards in bright colors that contain Hebrew letters and Roman numerals. As you can see, the history of tarot is vast, and you can literally continue down that rabbit hole for miles and miles, and it can go on and on for a very long time. As a history buff myself, I did my very best to try to create a timeline for the viewer to kind of see throughout history what could have been the evolution of the tarot. But please um, note that this is just one historical perspective and there are many more historical perspectives out there. Although it's my humbled opinion that to fully understand and appreciate the tarot, you have to look into its sister cards in Cartomancy. And those two sister cards are the regular playing deck and the Grand Tableau Le Normand. So here we have a regular playing deck. And then we have the Grand Tableau Le Normand. And as you can see, within Cartomancy, there is an evolution in regards to the cards. But let's take a little uh, historical peek at Cartomancy. Cartomancy can be traced back to Europe as far as 1360, but it really rose to prominence between the 18th and 20th centuries. Cartomancy was a favorite pastime of royals in European courts. The Game of Hope, a game of chance designed by Johann Kaspar Hechtel of Nuremberg in 1799, later to be known as Le Petit Lenormand. Anne-Marie Lenormand, a French professional fortune teller in Napoleonic era, used a variety of divination techniques and tools ranging from ordinary playing cards, to palmistry, and even astrology in order to read people's fortunes. Publishers of the time tagged her name with Hechtel's playing cards and republished the 36-card deck in 1875 by B.P. Grimo and renamed as Grand Jeu de Emile Lenormand. It's important to note that playing cards, oracle cards, and tarot cards were once played as card games, and for gambling only, probably because of religious superstitions and the control of the church. Fortune-telling rose to fame at specific points in time when spiritualism and occultism were more in the public eye. The tarot that we know and love has evolved throughout the centuries, and its design and significance has been altered depending on the creator and the artist's interpretation. Tarot, a mystical set of cards having an uncertain origin. Although these cards, covered with images, are most commonly used for divination, they have much more spiritual purposes. Today a standard tarot is composed of two main sections, the 22 picture cards of the major arcana and the 56 cards of the minor arcana consisting of four suits, each with ten numbered or pip cards and four images of European royalty or court cards. What is a tarotist? Definition of a tarotist, a tarot reader, scholar, or enthusiast. 
To conclude this video on the history of tarot, I think it's worth mentioning one of the most famous books on tarot that was distributed in its time. It's still popular today and it's definitely worth mentioning as millions of people worldwide know about this book. And that is this one right here. Eden Gray, June 9, 1901 to January 14, 1999, was the professional name of Priscilla Pardridge, an American actress and writer on the esoteric meanings of tarot cards and their use in fortune telling. Some of Eden Gray's books are as listed, Tarot Revealed, a modern guide to reading the tarot cards. Inspiration House, New York, 1960. Reprinted, Signet Books, 1969. Recognition, Themes on Inner Perception, Inspiration House, 1969. A Complete Guide to the Tarot. Bantam Books and Crown Publishers, New York, 1970. Mastering the Tarot, Basic Lessons in an Ancient, Mystic Art. Crown Publishers, New York, 1971. These were the first tarot books that many novice tarotists read at the time and are still considered classics or perfect beginner books to read when one wants to learn and understand the magical world of the tarot. I first bought this book when I got my first tarot deck back in 1996. I was 16 years old and I bought uh, this book and my Rider Wade Smith tarot deck uh, at Sunnyside Bookshop um, here in Canada. And yeah, they went hand in hand and I got this book because I wanted to learn the meanings and definitions of the tarot cards. Now, I believe this book is not the most popular uh, definition and interpretation in regards to the cards, but it's a great beginner's guide and it also has the history of tarot and some tarot card spreads. Um, it goes into how to do, like for example, the Celtic cross and how to do different types of spreads. And it has pretty good information you know it even goes a little bit into the astrology as well as the tree of life method there we go even as i conclude this video on the history of the tarot i am not personally satisfied because i feel i didn't cover everything that could just be the perfectionist in me but overall the tarot um, when you're trying to understand its history and origins it has its um, anthropology in different cultural parts of the world and i may not have mentioned them all um, there's um, a very strong link to the kabbalah uh, and to Jewish mysticism. There's a strong link to um, different types of Hermeticism and the Druids, as well as to astrology and perhaps even prehistoric times where people were developing storytelling and archetypes and myths of how we developed an understanding of the world around us. Um, it's definitely steeped in the mystery teachings. It's definitely part of the occult sciences. And it may still remain a mystery. However, we can uncover uh, these um, hidden truths if we just uh, look and be sincere in our attempt to understand. Um, I know that this is not going to be my only video on the history of tarot. I am going to improve my research and I will be posting future videos on the tarot and all of the wonderful players that created the tarot. There's this all this there's a whole other world on the different types of tarot decks and the artistry and the cultural phenomena of where they came from and their links. So it's, it, like I said, it's very vast. So I hope you've enjoyed this um, limited but hopefully insightful video on the history of the tarot. Please leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching and remember dear Stardust, everything you're searching for is already found within you. I wish you a very good night. 
Until next time, planet people.